Our odyssey into the world of vermicomposting began when Bill organized a lecture on the subject. My name is Bill Holzer, and I work with NIPER, the New York Public Interest Research Group. And tonight, we're here to talk trash. Mm -hmm. Americans toss about 100 billion pounds of food every single year. According to the UN, that's more than enough to feed every empty stomach in Africa. Does anybody know which greenhouse gas is produced by food decomposing in landfills? Methane? Yes, that's exactly right. And the EPA has found that landfills are the largest source of methane emissions in America. And methane is 23 times as potent as carbon dioxide. Clearly, we have a problem on our hands. We can cut waste, conserve resources, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. When you're doing a small box like this, you can save over 500 pounds pre-consumer food waste alone in a year. We're very honored to have Brenda Latito join us tonight. She's the founder and president of Upstate Worm Farms. Vermicomposting that we're going to talk about today will be something that you can do every day inside your house. So Bill, I know a lot of people are interested in, in starting a home composting unit. And uh, what is vermicomposting and how does someone get started with it? Well, I think the first thing to say is that there are a number of different ways to compost. Vermicomposting is basically the process of recycling food scraps by using worms. Verma means worm in Latin. What would you say are the advantages or disadvantages to composting inside versus outside? Composting indoors is more controlled. You can see what's going on. The weather is not a factor. It's indoors. You control the temperature. The end product is one of the most nutrient-rich organic fertilizers possible. To get started, you need four different things. Uh, first thing is going to be a bin, and we've decided to use wood to make our bin uh, because wood tends to be more absorbent, tends to be a better insulator. You want to make sure that the worms are sitting somewhere comfortably in between 40 degrees and 80 degrees. One of the problems with using plastic is that the temperature outside the bin tends to be the temperature inside the bin, and plastic also tends to keep the compost a little bit too moist. We built this wooden composting box, and what I did initially is I went over to a wine shop and picked up a couple of crates. After that, I stopped by uh, Lowe's and picked up a couple of little latches there and uh, some hinges over here and uh, put together this box. So wood is recommended. Is there any type of woods you should stay away from? Yeah, you want to try to avoid redwoods. You want to avoid really aromatic woods. These might ultimately kill the worm. What you can try doing is going on Craigslist and uh, looking for different curb alerts. Say if you find a, a dresser on the side of the road, take out a drawer. That'll work. That'll do the trick. You might not even make your own bin whatsoever, but you can just go out and, and buy a composting bin from, say, a retailer or something like that. Either way, you want to make sure that you, you wash it out really well before you actually get started. One thing that you want to ensure is that you have a depth of at least 8 to 12 inches for your worms. Red wigglers tend to be top feeders. Uh, this means that uh, you don't need a really deep box in order to compost. It makes the whole composting process much more compact. Let's say if you have less than 8 inches on the bottom, just make sure that it's a little bit wider, a little bit longer. The second thing that you're going to need is newspaper. Roughly, we're going to have about an inch wide strip and we're going to shred up the newspaper and that provides a, a bedding for the worms. I call it a worm sandwich. So we have carbon newspaper on the bottom. We have our worms, our waste, and our carbon source on the top. So more shredded paper. Okay, damp shredded paper. Okay, because we've got to start the breakdown process. We've already soaked the newspaper. Now I'm just going to squeeze out any excess water. The newspaper should not be sopping wet. You should be able to squeeze it out and maybe get two, three drops out of it. You're going to want to have about three to four inches of fluffed up newspaper in your box. An anatomy lesson helps us understand the process. It's like a tube in a tube. You know how worms squiggle and they move, okay? You'll have the action helping the food waste get to the end product. They eat from the top and they poop at the bottom. When they come up, they're moving that newspaper that's at the bottom, they're moving that up. 
and they're going to feed on that as well as the organics. They can eat half their body weight a day. They don't sleep, they just eat and poop. Other things that you can add at this point, if you've got any uh, leaves or leaf litter, you can uh, throw that in with your newspaper. How are they digesting the food? We recommend using a, a little bit of dirt. You want to throw some dirt into the box to help the worms digest their food a little bit. We need some sand, we need some eggshells, we need something that those worms can grasp in order to combine with the food waste they're ingesting. The third thing that you're going to need is uh, the worms, the worms themselves. And uh, we recommend using red wigglers. They're also called tiger worms, red worms, trout worms. Okay, so where can we get worms? And there, are, there are a lot of different places. Uh, a good place to start is just doing an internet search. Uh, you might check uh, ads in different garden magazines. If you're in the upstate New York area, we highly recommend using upstate worm farms. Put them down the middle, uh, kind of like a hot dog. The fourth thing that you're going to need is uh, food scraps. Okay, so what kind of food scraps can we add to our compost and how often and how much are we putting in there? One pound of worms will eat a half a pound of food waste a day. I don't suggest you do that. You start out a little at a time. Just start out conservatively add a little bit of food and see what the worms are actually capable of eating in any given period of time. You're going to put a half of your handful into that box. A couple days later you're going to see how well the worms are eating that and then you're going to replace what they've eaten. We think it's best to take your food and put it right on top of the worms. So you pull back your little newspaper bedding and you put the food right on the worms and then cover it back up with the newspaper and the reason for doing it that way, for keeping the food relatively concentrated, is that you don't run the risk of having flies and other vermin get to the food before the worms uh, actually get to work their magic. The things that worms love are coffee, tea, fruits, vegetables. Worms hate different things like meats, dairy products, fats, oils. Worms cannot live on veggies alone. They need a carbon source. You want to keep uh, a lot of materials like newspaper, things like leaves uh, in your box, and, and these are the materials that are high in carbon. And then you add, uh, say, just a little bit of uh, materials that are rich in nitrogen, uh, materials like, uh, say, some of your pre-consumer food waste. You know, you, you cut the top off of a bell pepper, throw it in there, and that's a material that's rich in nitrogen. You want to try to maintain a carbon to nitrogen ratio of about 25 or 30 to 1. So you want more carbon than food waste. That carbon is going to work for you when the waste starts rotting. It will soak up um, any leach it. There's a lot of liquid to begin with in the rotting process. Plus, the worms will start eating it and even break it down more with more liquid. Composting is definitely an ongoing process. So it's kind of a learning experience, learn as you go. If you're composting correctly, you should not have liquid waste. That is a signal to you that maybe you're putting too much in the box and the worms aren't able to keep up. You add more carbon as you go along? It depends on how you started in the beginning. If you didn't add enough carbon, you'll know that very shortly because there won't be enough carbon to cover your waste, so you'll add carbon. No matter how much food waste you have in there, if it's not moist enough, they will not survive. Oxygen goes through their skin when it's damp. They like about 70% moisture. How do you know your, your soil is 70% moisture? You know it when they're eating well, when they're working for you. How long do you wait to typically remove the compost out of the box? Within three months, you should be able to see compost and be able to take it out of the box. Finished compost should look like coffee grounds. It's the most nutrient-dense compost you can get naturally. When you're scraping at the box to find a handful of newspaper, that's a key sign that it's ready to be sifted.